was out looking for bluefin tuna and not having much success on a five-day trip. But you know you did your due diligence and, and that's part of it. I mean, if somebody said they hadn't had a tough day or hadn't ever been skunked, I think they're probably lying. You know, <laughs> you know at that point you look at the camaraderie you had with your great your people on board, your passengers on board, I'm sure they were all knew a lot of those guys. You had to have a great time anyway. And you know, you can't fault uh, Mother Nature for things that are going on. We just, we don't know. We don't have that crystal ball. So I might, I'll throw it back in the court of fish and game. They all seem to be able to look at retrospect until the season, but how come they didn't predict this? You know, these are the guys that are making up our rules and regulations, folks. And these are some of the things that I have problems with and I have always had problems with over the years. And we'll delve into that a little, you know, as we go through the show here too, Phil. All right, great. Uh, you welcome everybody to the Danny Cadota Show. Captain Danny Cadota with decades of experience and knowledge in this business. Man, I'll tell you, there's nobody better to ask questions. Let's let, what the heck? We'll start uh, asking a couple questions, and I guess Landon Stewart he's asking the question that is on everybody's mind because. Where did they go? Where are the bluefin? What's going on? What do you think, man? And, now, and let me our, give let me yeah, give a little yeah, background no, go first. Go ahead. Yeah, we were out on a five day trip. We yep. covered six hundred miles of water. We never saw a bluefin tuna. The Independence is out right now. They left Tuesday morning, and they've been out. They've circumnavigated San Clemente Island. They've hit the Mushroom Bank. Now they're in Mexican waters again, out to the west. Still haven't seen anything. None of the other boats have seen anything. I think it's been about two weeks, Danny, so that everybody's kind of up to uh, speed now. Go ahead. What do you think? What's going on here? What do I think? I don't know. <laughs> you know what? I'm being honest. You know, um, like I said, you know, we have all these biologists making predictions and everything. You tell us, please, because I'm baffled and you, just, you don't know. Maybe they... And, and perhaps they have their noses down in the mud. You know, it could be... A, a what does that mean thing. exactly? Well, a lot of times, like bluefin in the years past, a lot of times they would fatten up. We wouldn't even know they were still here. They may have... These, they used to always... Theorize, the theory was that they, they'd feed up here on the West Coast and then travel across the Pacific back to Japan and come across and, and go back and forth. And, you know, I kind of... I, I don't really see that. I, or there might be different schools of fish that did different things. Uh, I I was around when they had those 800,000 pound bluefin up at the Channel Islands when they, the Saners got them. Some of the guys, some of the sport guys hooked them and emptied their reels and had no idea they're, these fish were that magnitude. So there's so much that we don't know. I mean, that's almost the thing. And I think in a sense, that's a good thing for the bluefin and for all of us in that if we knew everything about it, we'd wipe them out, you know? And I, and I mean that. We sadly wipe that out through, through greed. You know, so having this and trying to figure things out, I mean, as a fisherman, that's always the, the neat part of it, you know. So, you know, uh, there's a lot of conjecture as, as to what's going on. Oh, is you there know, ever? I, I, it's I, the know, eclipse, it's the yeah, this, it's yeah, the that. Yeah, but, you know, and, and Phil, you were, one of the first things I asked you when you got back from the trip was, Water temps. So yeah. if you tell the people, I mean, some of the water temps, that was... Yeah, we had like water temps from 54 degrees in some remote areas of the Baja coast. Mostly on the coast, it was 57. And then our warmest water offshore, I believe, was 61.5. So it's cold, Yeah, you know? Yeah. It's albacore cold. Yeah. Oh, well, we just, you know, hey, it's, uh, you know, a uh, hindrance for one, it's a blessing for the other. But, you know, um, the thing that... I will always reiterate, too, is that a lot of those bluefin, you know, like even during our season, if they're down several hundred feet, if they're below that thermocline, it's cold, folks. Yeah, right. So, you know, the water temps, to me, doesn't mean a thing, because, you know, during the summertime, those things are popping up from, we're getting some at 450 feet, and, you know, during the day, they're coming up and eating fly line baits. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we don't know, which is probably a good thing for the fish. It gives them a chance, you know. I think they'd be completely wiped out if we knew everything that they did. And so that's kind of a good thing. I think maybe it's Mother Nature's way of preserving them and keeping them around, keeping them sustainable. Uh, I've had people ask me this question. Could it be that they're gone? That we've had this cycle, we've enjoyed it, 
they're gone. Is is that a possibility? Uh, that, that's it must also, be, right? It's always a possibility. But, yeah. you know, I mean, and I would have to look at, to me, I think it's going to de really depend on the bait source. Yeah. You know, whether the deans are there, the squid, you know. And uh, years past on some of these bigger fish, those ones that are sitting out year-round at Tanner and Cortez, you know, they had their noses down in the mud, but they're eating, I'm sure they were eating squid, you know. So um, till we understand all that, until we know all those facts, I think they're probably still around, you know. So I don't think it's necessarily water temp because they have that, you know, they can survive that water. At, yeah, they can. At, you know, 600 feet, 400 and something feet. You know, and it's, it's much colder there. And if it's not affecting, you know, they're cold-blooded, you know, it's not affecting them like it affects us, you know, although we may think about that on our head. But, um, you know, there's definitely certain fish that stay within certain parameters of water temps. When they hit that timber climb, then they bounce back up. And that's yeah. yellowfin for the most part. Absolutely. Okay. 100%. But bluefin, albacore, they put their noses down in the mud. Yeah. So they could take that cold. Yeah. You know. And so, you know, there's a lot we really don't know. But, you know, I, I, I suspect as long as there's a, a supply of bait and you have the bait source, I think they're still going to be around. I think it's, and, and you guys had a little bit of weather, too. Oh, that boy, we got our teeth That kicked, doesn't yeah. help the, the right. looking and the coverage. How many boats are on them? How many in the fleet, you know? I mean, when the fleet spreads out and you're getting the information networking with all the different guys in the fleet, you know, you cover a lot more ground. It's very easy to miss. And when you find oh, a yeah. good spot, you know, it definitely could sustain a handful or a couple handfuls of boats and everybody can get it done. So, you know, it's a matter of just being on the fish. What makes this a little more problematic, I guess I would say, is that during the past several years, we've been able to find them in this certain geographical area, maybe 100 or 200 miles down below the border up to Tanner Cortez, somewhere in there, right. whether it's on the 60 or it's out there right. around Desperation Reef up at Clemente or wherever, they've been in there. And that's been covered here. Spotter Plane's been up three times, and the last three times he's seen nothing. Yeah. And so it just adds a layer of, oh, my God, what is going on yeah. here? Yeah, yeah. Well, the good news you you got in, you know you know we've got some yellowtail coming up right that it, stuff that the stuff down at Ensenada and yeah. that, you know we were told prior to this blow and everything that there was a lot of yellowtail coming up the line so you know hopefully that will and and traditionally that's what we used that led off the season for us in the years past oh yeah yeah you know, we started out the Coronados fishing the yellows you know and then it transitioned offshore you know to the whether it was the bluefin or the albacore, but it transitioned after there. And the yellowtail generally stayed, you know, locally along the islands and in shore more, you know. Yeah, you mentioned that Ensenada bite, and you can clearly see why it's going on inside the bay where the San Diego fleet can't go in, but the water in there is 62 degrees, and the water outside of there is 57, 58 degrees, so yeah, you, you can clearly see the reason they're yeah. all in there. Yeah, yeah. And not only yellows, but Big Bonita, and then I talked to Foca, who's a pongaro down there, he said, we're starting to catch a few barracuda, sand and calico bass are biting, everything you would expect to see when the water gets over 60, right? Yeah, yeah. And and typically, look back, folks, when was the last time we had a full line? I mean, you know, I mean, we've been spoiled for the last couple of years, Phil. But, you know, typically, you didn't start seeing the tuna till uh, we brought the boats down to San Diego in June or so, you know, at least. And this is still, you know, still March, April. So it's, it's still early, but, you know, like I said, it's also... Uh, the bluefin aren't dependent that much on the, the surface temperatures as is yellowfin yeah. and albacore, uh, you know, a few other species, you know. Uh, and so, you know, we just keep our fingers crossed. But there was tremendous volume of fish. You know, I, I still believe it was the uh, commercial guys were done a couple first of weeks month. after the first month in, yeah. in January. So, you know, there's a, there's a glut of fish around, folks. Just a matter of them popping up, getting them located, and, and we'll be back busy. If, away. if you were a captain in San Diego right now, would you be nervous? How would you feel? Well, a if, little bit, if right? I was in San, yeah, but you, and see, like for me, I was here at 22nd Street till June. Yeah. We didn't transition our season to down in San Diego to, to almost like July. Yeah. You know, we put in our June at Clemente and Catalina, and then we 
we'd outfit it and get it ready to go down to San Diego. And you were focused that. mostly on albacore. Yeah, albacore. Which used to show well, up. anything else offshore, yeah. yeah. Any of your pelagic right. species, yeah. Or kelpatiellos yeah, sure. or whatever, yeah. Sure, sure. But yeah, so, now, so I mean. later in the season. So it's still early yet, folks. When were you on the Pride and you caught that first bluefin? That was like, what, December or something like that? Yeah, or? yeah, because we, I don't think it ever really shut down that year, no. right? Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just further. We've been, I think we've been spoiled, Phil. I think that's the biggest part of it. Yeah. We've been spoiled. We have seen phenomenal, you know, bluefin fishing. That Incredible. Day. Just absolutely Including this year. Yes. I mean, yes. Polaris Supreme, 43 bluefin, 35 over 100 pounds. Yeah. I mean, come on, that's phenomenal. Yeah. That is phenomenal. So we're getting a little spoiled. But, you know, don't, uh, don't panic yet, folks. They're fish. They have fins. They move. They swim, you know. And it's a matter of relocating. And a lot has to do with, we don't have the coverage either. That has something to do with it, too. You don't, it's easy to miss with one or two boats, you know. When you get a fleet on them, you know, you can stay on them a lot easier. So that's a big, big factor in working with, the, you know, the whole fleet. Well, there's a few more boats that are going to get out this weekend. So that could help the, the efforts. We, we just keep our, keep our fingers crossed, you know. Well, and you had the weather. That yeah. didn't help. That certainly didn't help. Oh, my God. It you was know. five days of getting our teeth kicked in. Yeah, yeah. That was brutal. <laughs> I was hurting just thinking about you guys. <laughs> I was in the stern the whole time pretty much because my son Philip is hardcore. Yeah. And he was trolling in that crap weather. And oh, we're just sitting man. in a couple of folding chairs. Yeah, yeah. Me, Philip, and his friend Josh the whole time. And, man, we got to chat about a whole bunch of stuff, celebrate Philip's birthday. And it, it was all good. You know? Yeah. Well, that's the best part. And you know what, folks? You do have to recognize that's probably the best part about going out is the camaraderie, the friendships, and the fellowshipping that you have with these guys over the years. You meet some of the best friends you'll ever meet in your life, you know. And to me, that's the, 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 the icing on the cake when, when I go fishing, you know, is, is being able to fish with a lot of our old friends. And when you get to fish with them for a long time, then you start messing with them. Then it even gets even more fun when you start pulling practical jokes and things, you know. But anyway... Now it's not the time. You don't want to, you know, uh, trigger somebody's and, and sabotage somebody's rod when there's no fish going on. But when right. it's wide open, a lot of us That's good a friends, good time to do it. Good friends, we get away with that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I've got to mention, by the way, the Independence crew was spectacular, worked their tail off. Danny, you've been there before. You work harder and pull your hair out more oh. on days and trips like when you're not catching than when you are catching. I guarantee you don't sleeping, you know. They're on the they're on the radio. They're calling. They're the meters going. They don't. They, you know. I mean, there's just so much information. And everything that that you have to process. And you can't miss anything. So these guys are on top of everything. But it's just it just gets to that point sometimes where they're down or they're, they've made their move and you don't have the coverage. That just happens. You know, that happens. So we just keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those yeah. situations where this may go on for a while or. We'll finish the show, and the independents, I'll talk to them, and they'll say, hey, wide open blue fan, here we go again, That's right? That's right. That's right. That's absolutely right. All right, let yeah. me get back to some questions okay. here. Michael Limone, you know Michael Limone. He just got his baseball coach's permission to watch the show during the game. So that means that Mike's not going to be running in here with his fish count, showing us as he goes, you know, from down on the docks. I mean, he has his. He's a little slayer. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he should be concentrating on his game, too, at the yeah, same time, yeah. shouldn't he? <laughs> yeah. That is so funny. Hey, uh, uh, Tommy great. Tarr is with us, and Tommy is a fantastic guy. Wants to know, Danny, have you ever had a fire on your boat or a customer fall overboard? Either one of those two or both. I never had one fall over. I threw one over. You did not. Yeah. Oh, I well, love we, it. What we, happened? Of course, we did that at the dock. But I mean, that was oh. customary when you got your captain's license. Oh, yeah. You know, we used to throw the guys. Yeah, the we did that with Gary and, here. Yeah. On the, on Fortunately, the... we never had to pull one out of the water out at sea. But a fire on the boat? Yeah, we did. We had a freshwater maker once catch on fire. And fortunately, it was, we were leaving Islandia, going out to the Albuquerque grounds. And um, we we're close to shore. So we, you know, we put it out and we ended up coming back in checking everything out, and then going back out again. But we lost the fresh water maker. But, yeah. And then I've been to, uh, I've been to a pretty bad one. Uh, the, it was in June. We are bringing the Mustang down from uh, L.A. to San Diego. And I'm in the warehouse, and Frank Redlew, 
which is Mike Redler's dad, is in the warehouse with us. I think I have Brian Kerhar. We have my crew, Marty Tanaka, and all the all the kids on on the on the boat as we're bringing the boat down to San Diego. And um, I'm looking up. I see black smoke out by Point Loma, and I go, "What the heck is that?" And Frank says, "I think it's one of those old caterpillar, you know, one of the old uh, Ditmars." He fired up or something. I said, "No, there's pretty black smoke." And I looked at it, and it was a, it was a fire. It was a mascot, and they had dry stacks. You guys know what the dry stacks are. We have west section where the water goes out, and it's cooled by the water. But the dry stacks would go up, and they're in heavy insulation, you know. Um, and the stacks went on fire, and they're very difficult to get off. And so we kicked it, kicked in the butt. We just got out of the yard. We're all spanking new. You know, polished up the Mustang was, you know, the linear polyurethane, thing, and we just kicked it. And we got there, and um, very interesting scenario. We, there was already a helicopter overboard, Coast Guard helicopter overboard, um, and, and overseeing things. But, you know, we went alongside of them. We had a little bit of swell, so we put all the bumpers out, and we're taking passengers. You know, like passengers are trying to bring their tackle boxes and rods. We go, no, leave them. We just need to get people off, you know. And one of the first things we did was we took, we just went through our Coast Guard up here before we went down to San Diego. We went through our inspection. So all the fire extinguishers were all brand new, charged up. First thing we did was we gave them every fire extinguisher, including the ones out of our engine room, the wheelhouse, the bunk room, everywhere. And they were able to contain the fire with the last extinguisher. Wow. Yeah. Just and made it. So, yeah. And then so what we had to do is we got back to H&M. We had to, we had to uh, go get them all charged up again because we shot off all of them. But, but it kept it from, you know, it kept it to smolder. They got it, and you know, they towed towed the boat back in. But no injuries. It was that was a, a huge blessing. But yeah, I mean, there's things that uh, we've seen over time in emergencies, and and uh, I think the the biggest uh, attribute is when you have seen and gone to these incidents is that you keep a, a calm head, a level head. Yes. You know, and uh, I was uh, blessed to have such a great crew. Like I said, I, you know, I had a friend like Frank Redley, Mike Redley's dad. I had Brian Kerhar, I think my brother. We had Mike with the Tanaka boys, you know, and we had very experienced crew members that were also very calm, which kept a calming with all the passengers. Now, yeah. mind you, these half-day passengers are there usually going to Sea World for a day, then they go out for a half day to go experience Southern California fishing. Yeah. So most of them aren't from California. You know, they're from vis- they're from visiting and coming into Sea World. Yeah. So you could see them kind of panicking, and it was a blessing having my crew and their experience, keeping them calm, getting them on board. You know, and uh, you know, it's just it was a great experience for all of us. Yeah. You know? But. There's a. I thought there was a rumor floating around uh, in the Danny Cadota history book about a guy that fell over and shut off a bite once. <laughs> Is that true or not? Yeah. I heard a story it's about true story. that. True story. Now we're talking about how when you're trolling for hours and hours and hours. Oh, I know all about that after this class, right? Yeah. And so you know, most of the guys are asleep in the galley. The rods are out there. You know, they have the clickers on. Uh, and all of a sudden, one goes off. Well, the guy's rod that goes off, he's so excited, he runs back to the stern, only he decided he was going back so fast to the stern, when he hit the stern, he went Oh, over. no. And, uh, yeah, it shut off the bite, plus it lost the fish, <laughs> you know. But, I mean, there's some things that... That's funny. Some things Poor that guy. Yeah. How yeah. was he when you fished him out of the water? Was he's... he scared? <laughs> or embarrassed? Or More what? embarrassed. More yeah. scared, you know. Yeah. But I mean, it's one of those, you know, telling you guys is, you know, thank you. you know, thank you. Thank you for what? I said, this is going to be a story I'll be able to tell for a long time. You know, <laughs> people won't believe it, but yeah. Some of the things that have happened over the years is just un- unbelievable. You know. All right. Tommy Tarr says, Phil, I will see you at the Fibbers Club meeting next Thursday in Costa Mesa. The Fibbers Christian Fishing Club. I always oh, yes. look forward to speaking there. So awesome. that'll be great. Yeah. Looking forward to it. David Rosenthal. Good evening, guys. David, it's great to see you, my friend. Anglers, pliers. Man, that is a great product. Where is it around here? Yes. Isn't it? I love those. And let's see. How's that right there? You got it, Philip? 
I think so, yeah. And we even have the website for everybody, hopefully. Let's see. Nobody can see that. Oh, wait, that. there it is right there, Phil, right behind your laptop. I can see. Is that the plier itself? Uh, oh, the pliers. Let me look. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we have them here. Is that them? I think I it is. I think that's them. Yeah. There you go, Danny. Shoot, sure, I'll let you show those off. Yes, Dave, thank you so much for my pair, too, but these are absolutely beautiful. You know, the angle is very nice, very comfortable for, yep. for pulling hooks, you know. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're beauties. I know, and I love the color. Yes, yeah. I don't know. Did you Fuel you or whatever it is. Yeah, I think yeah. people would see that. Yep. Yeah, rotate it around. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you, David. Of course, Thank you. All right, uh, let's Let keep moving here. And Alrighty. let's see, we got N6 Yuen, and he says he's thinking the Humboldt squid are back, and even the giant bluefin are terrified of them. <laughs> well, yeah, if you're talking about a 20 foot squid. <laughs> but yeah, but you know, they'll, they'll, they'll chomp them, they'll eat them. Swordfish will like them. Oh, swordfish, they'll eat them, yeah. Swordfish will eat them up too. Yeah. yeah. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, Nate says, good evening. Nate, always good to see you. Thank you for your constant support. Cue ball says, uh, hello to Danny and Phil. Cue ball, thank you for your constant support. James yeah. said, did they talk about Bluefin Tuna updates yet? I'm out tomorrow on the show. We have, James, and we wish you the very best of luck. What do you say to James? Do you, do you tell him, hang hope, in there? I hope you get him because you never know. You know, like I said, generally early in the season has to do with the coverage and the coverage you know when you're working and networking within a fleet of boats it's a lot easier when people are working together you could head out so many degrees apart look at different areas and you know when you if you do find them you get them to chew a little bit you know you put it on the radio give everybody a shot to get over to that area and it's much easier staying on the fish you know with with the fleet you know an individual boat and then, you know, this, this winter time, you generally don't have enough passengers to, to, get, to keep a fleet of boats out there on those fish. And in, and in fact, for a lot, a lot of times, you know, like during the, the season, the bluefin were so easy to catch, you know, so easy to find that we've gotten a little spoiled. And, uh, you know, when you don't have enough coverage with the boats, it's, hard, it's definitely harder to stay on them, especially at this time of year, you know, where the, you have the... the Fish probably dropping off in the thermocline. They may be down eating squid. You know, I, I can't tell you that. I don't know. You know, you'll know the minute you start getting them. But even the guys that had them up a few weeks back where they're getting those good bites, you know, if you cut open the stomachs, it'll tell you what they're eating, you know. And that should tell you, you know, where you should be looking for the most part, too. We've had some fish taken outside of San Francisco this year. I know of yeah, one at amazing. least that was taken that's up there. That's amazing, yeah. And, you know, when you have that water temp that we're getting right now, it's conducive for one of those other little fin guy, the long fin guys that we see. So you just never know. I, I, that's what I say. We just don't know, you know. We'll have to wish James the very best. James, yeah. good luck, my I friend. I hope you Thanks. get them. I hope you find them. Yeah, me too. Me sure. too. Hopefully they'll us. find them before. Let me ask you this, Danny. If this goes on for another two weeks, then would you start being a little more concerned? This is April, Phil. Yeah. I never took my boat down until June, you know, but we, we've been very spoiled over the last few years. I mean, we've been catching them year-round for the yeah, most part. Yeah, I know. You know, and that, to my knowledge, we've never done that in the past, but, you know, the <clears throat> upgrades in electronics and, and getting enough people to go and, and keeping enough boats out there to stay on the fish is, is not easy to do. So, you know... Uh, now that we're missing them for a little while, I, it's tough. I mean, it always plays with your mind. Sure. But, you know, I, I, I think they'll, they'll pop. You know, it's hard to say. It's a little cool. But like I said, if it's cool for one thing, it's, probably, it's good for some other fish. Yeah. You know. Well, what are you talking about, Danny? Albacore. Uh, so, Is this the know, year we're going to catch albacore? I mean, it's, the water's conducive. I mean, the water temps certainly, you know, and... I remember in 83 when we had the hot water with El Nino and then went to 84 and it cooled off, you know, we had no idea we were going to have that record year. It was an exceptional you know, albacore exceptional year, right? Exceptional albacore year. And the bait was not easy to get, though. You know, um, I was blessed in that we had just moved uh, two of the boats, the, you know, our fortune, the Mustang, we moved them over to Atlantia. We got the lease in Atlantia and we kept my brother. 
at H&M. The Cherokee was at H&M. And the boats at uh, Point Loma were all getting rationed at the receivers with anchovies. And it was full-on albacore right in June. And I think it might have been even May when they started up. But when we were in Mission Bay, and I can't remember if it was uh, Billy Stevens or Gigi was running the fortune, but, um, you know, all my boats we built these 100 scoop tanks for, and I wanted the ammunition, right? So when we went to Mission Bay, same, you know, same hauler, bait haulers, they're every hand bait company. Yeah. And um, all the Mission Bay boats, the seaport boats had no overnight boats back in those days. They're all half day boats. They're dealing with that sea, you know, sea world crowd. Tourists. Yeah, yeah. tourists are getting a half day crowd and, and, you know, people going in and out. So it was beautiful because I was tanking 100, we were tanking 100 scoops on the Fortune, 100 on the Mustang, and then we'd go on out and then we'd transfer to, you know, help fill my brother's tanks up too, I'm sure. But it was, it was phenomenal albacore fishing and it was close. You know, most of that stuff was all 60 miles. 65, you know, but it was, you know, a record year for us. So you just don't know. You so really don't know. last March, Danny, water temperatures were trending upward with the El Nino. This March, 2024, trending downward, which plays into exactly what you're talking yeah, about. We, and we just don't know. We just keep our fingers crossed, folks. Keep your fingers crossed. We could use that change, to be honest with you. And I will tell you this, that when the albacore bite, the boats are going to be full. Oh, yeah. Everything that runs will be out there catching fish. Because you got the old guys like us who remember with fond memories catching Albuquerque. And then you got oh, all yeah. these new guys who are like, yeah. what are these guys talking about? I want to go experience this. You're going to catch the chicken of the sea, folks. Yeah. Yep. Yep, 100%. All right, yeah. let's go back to the questions. Thanks, everybody. Big crowd tonight. Lots of great questions. We appreciate it. Hit that like button. We deeply appreciate it when you do that. And you can share this show right now with a friend. Just hit the share button and share it so people can join Danny tonight. That would be fantastic. And 6 Wen says, take a look at the last weather front that came through and how cold it was. Really scary. So it was pretty cold. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was cool. But, you know, like I said, we're looking, you know, we're looking at surface temperatures, folks, too. So keep that in mind too, you know, wherever the thermoclines may be. And 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 mostly is it conducive to hold the bait. You know, we're looking at chovies, which, you know, survive better in the cooler water. So, you know, um, we may have that trade off, you know. All right, Q Ball says, doesn't sound like anything has stuck its head up yet. There's a few more boats looking and more going out, they'll find them. That's the spirit, Q Ball. They will. It's gonna. It'll happen. You know, it'll happen. It, it takes time. I mean, uh, if to be honest, if you've never had a skunk, you haven't fished long enough. You know, because that just happens. That's just part of it. You know? Yeah, we got down to the point where Philip, uh, we we're celebrating my young, my oldest son's birthday yeah. on the trip, and uh, he was throwing. We were finishing the trip up last few minutes of the trip, and he was throwing a plastic up on the white water. These rocks around Punabanda. And I go, you can't get a bass, huh? And he goes, no, man, I just want to get one bass here on my birthday. And then all of a sudden, nice big calico, last oh, fish of the trip. Sweet. Yeah, made his made him just uh, really, really happy. Oh, and, and, and I told you, Danny, uh, uh, on the night of his birthday, he or the night before, he goes, I think this is the best birthday I've ever had. And that's without catching any fish. So that tells you there's more to a trip than oh, catching yeah. the fish. Absolutely, absolutely. There's nothing like being on a boat. You're getting in a mind cleansing. You know, here's the beauty of that. You got five days of not having to listen to fake news or whatever, rumors going around in the country, people arguing, fighting, listening to murder reports and this and that, that, you know, stupid things that are going on on shore. Yes. You know, and you're just enjoying the company on the boat, which we're all out there for one thing, to have a good time. Absolutely. You know, you know. All right, Mackie, where are you? Mackie's supposed to be here, but he wants to know what the score of Michael's baseball game is. And Michael, I think his coach said, enough of that show. You got to get, you know, start watching what's going on here. Calico Chris, good to see you here, my friend. He's another great person. I was going to do a surf fishing thing this weekend, but it does look like we're going to have some rain. Nate says, if no one gets any this weekend, I think I'll reschedule my trip next Tuesday. 
What do you think about that? Is that just... You know, What's I, up I, I yeah. It. You know, you and and like I say, you just you never know what's going to happen. You know, I've been on trips that you know we were committed to because we were charters. You know, we had charters, and uh, you know, you look at the counts, and if you just keep watching the counts, you just you, but you never know what's going to happen. You j I can't I can't explain it. You you just have to be there when it goes off. But I've I've seen both sides of the coin. You know. Where you go out, it's wide open and just shuts off to nothing. Right. You know, and and then same deal where you, you're expecting a tough trip and it's banner. So, you know, when you fish long enough and, you know, as many hundreds of trips as we've done over the years, you know, you're going to see a lot of different things, you know. So one thing for sure, you won't get anything sitting in your living room. That's a hundred percent for sure, yeah, right? Yeah, that's got to get out there. Year. Yeah, you got to be out there. That is for sure. Yeah. David Rosenthal says, "Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. He appreciate you showing off the pliers, Danny. Yeah. Hope to see you at the Outdoors and Sport Fishing Expo in Ventura next month, and that will be at the Ventura Fairgrounds on Cinco de Mayo weekend, the fifth of July. So definitely, we will be up there, David, and we will be looking for you, my friend." Dan Smith, the old albacore guy, the old commercial guy. <laughs> Did someone say albacore? Asked Dan Smith. Wow, we just tuned in, and we'll watch the replay tonight. Hello, Captain Danny, Phil, and all the great Friedman Adventures family. He's a great guy, yeah, man. Yeah. And he's dying for some albacore, too. Oh, he would love to see the return. You know, it's been a while. It's been a while. I think... 2012, maybe it was the last really yeah, I, decent year. I can't year. even tell you when, Phil. Yeah, I, I think that's tell it, you Danny. When. I, I, I will tell you this. I did cure myself, you know, back in the old days when we were growing up. There was no limit on Albuquerque. I know. You don't have to tell me that. And um, I wailed on those things. Yeah, we did too. <laughs> and, and, and I learned no more of that. Yeah. And it was just too much, too much work. You had to babysit them. You had to go blow ice in. Just to give all that stuff away became a real pain. So, yeah, you know. We literally, my brother and I, this is totally against the law, okay? <laughs> but we didn't even know it was against the law. We'd come home with 20, 30, 40 albacore. We'd take a sign and we'd paint on the sign albacore. I think it was $10 each or maybe 20 I'm not sure. And we'd put it on Carson Street in Torrance. <laughs> we'd have freaking people pulling over and buying fish and... Totally illegal, right? Right. Yeah, totally. But we didn't know that. Yeah, and we're yeah, like yeah. making way more money than anybody else. You know, <laughs> kids that are working at the burger stand sure, for two sure, bucks an hour sure. or whatever and you it had was. had fun getting them. Yes. That was the best part. Yeah. I it mean, was a win-win deal. We also did that now. I don't know about the legality of this, but we would go down to San Quentin, 140 miles into Baja, and we'd murder the barred perch. And we'd fill an ice chest, and then we'd go straight to Chinatown. Chinese love barb perch. That's where you, we would get top dollar, and we would make some money, and then head right back down again <laughs> and do it all over again. So, I think uh, uh, yeah. the statute of limitations has run out. So. Yeah, so we're good. good. Yeah, so I think I can I'm tell good. some of my stories. Yeah, you <laughs> okay. can. Yeah, exactly. I got some more. Um, oh, all right, Glacier Shark says, "Sounds like there are no fish." That's not the case. I mean, well, you know, they're around somewhere. They're somewhere. somewhere you know, yeah, we and just it, don't know where. I mean, maybe not no. No fish. We just haven't. Found, we haven't been able to get on top of them. Yeah, hundred so percent. Do you know? We just don't know yet. And you know, you know I mean, have to have the coverage. Number one. Yes. Yeah. And plus, you know, you look at this in two more months when the water is warm and there's barracuda everywhere and there's calico bass bite and everything else. It's going to be a whole different ocean. Oh yeah, yeah. And you, you, and I keep going back to look at the calendar. What month is this? Typically. You know, in years past, you know, it was June, July. June was early. It's usually July. Oh, yeah. yeah. There was usually July was kickoff time. There was one year where we had them on Mother's Day, Albacore I'm talking about, oh, but yeah. very yeah, yeah. unusual. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, everybody, before we had water temperature charts and everything, yeah. you just wait till everybody blew their fireworks off. Oh, yeah. And then you'd go on an exploratory. Yep. 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 And guys would go, hook up! Yep. And Absolutely. Then, you, that's that's how we found them in those days. You know, I can tell you about one funny trip had to do with an old friend, a good friend of all of ours, Pat Conklin. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, Pat was running the Freedom, and, and we were all over at uh, Portsacol at the time. And Fred Carrazzo had the Freedom, 
And Fred was really tough. You know, he was an old cop, but he only had the landing at Norm's Landing, or what was the Ports Call then. And he was very strict about, you know, he was tight with the money, right? Yeah, yeah. But when it came to Albacore, Carrazzo was a nut, you know? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, so, I remember. like we said, we, we did a goof off, and I had Hero, which was my deadhead on the Mustang. Yeah. Hero, Pat, I think Paulus, a bunch of guys from, from the boats there. And I think we had about eight of us. We took the Freedom out with eight guys. Oh, my God. And uh, With some lip fulls? Lipos. Did you? I brought, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had lip A lot of those guys hadn't done that before. Why don't you so explain anyway. in case there's a new listener? Oh, just, what is a well, lip Back ball? then, a lip you know, we had a lot of them was typically your bamboo, big bamboo with bigger diameter on it, you know, and we hit our, we had tuna pads where you put it in the pad and you just you pull them straight on board. Right. You're and, fishing what pound? Like, uh, well, we're fishing 200 pounds. Fishing wire. Yeah. Okay. Fishing wire with yeah. barbless hooks. Yep. So when they hit the deck, they just fall right off. You and know? you go back in and the water so, again. So a lot of those guys had never done it. So we were back there whaling on these things and uh, just having a blast. Just flat out having a blast. Just eight of us. And, and uh, Fred was happy. We were happy. And uh, so you, you just don't know. You just don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. You know? That is for sure. It's a crazy world out there. Uh, Fishing Matt Ryan. Hey, it is good to see you. He says, hi, guys. It's good to see you, Fishing Matt. Uh, Emilio Escobar. What's up, young guys? Are you talking to us, Emilio? Have you seen <laughs> Danny and I? Man. Yeah, there's not too many uh, darker hairs on the chins and mustache there, guy. Okay? Good to see you, Emilio. Thanks for being here. Uh, Fish and Matt saying hi to his fellow Freedman Adventure family member, of course, Dan Smith. And Emilio says, an update on Bluefin Tuna Phil. Well, we've been talking about that, Emilio, and it is still very, very dicey. I guess I should say, there's no fish being saved. Yeah. I yeah. just went through we five days coverage. on the Independence. Yeah. But how many boats were out there? Um, Re reality. I Look think we were the only one. We oh, were the only one. It's easy to miss. Because everybody stayed in because right, of the weather. And right. It's easy we're a pretty miss. big rig that Independence can handle big the rough rig, weather. But that's a big, bigger ocean. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know. 100%. Yeah. Because, you know, we covered 600 miles of water, but if there was fish a mile outside of us, you could miss them. You'd like, miss so, it. You'd miss it. Yeah. So easy. I mean, you could go and hit all the banks where, you know, a lot of times they're off on the edges. You just, you, we just don't know. And, you know, with them, they, they could be down with their noses in the mud, too, you know. Fisher Matt Ryan says, Phil, you're going to be a grandpa. Hey, thank you so much for mentioning that. Let's see. It is going to be Patrick and his wife having a baby in July and Philip and his wife in August. So, All right. man, I got a fun summer ahead of All me. All right. And both right. boys. So not that uh, both my boys and yours truly also just want a healthy baby. Oh, yeah. But they're going to be boys, so... Uh -oh. oh, so you got people to... You know, you got the, the kids now to carry your tackle. You're going to need that. <laughs> your prods and reels on the boat on the trips. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It's going to be great. Yeah, thank you so much, Matt, for uh, mentioning that. Dan Smith says, Danny, you are so right. Being on the water is such a cleansing. And we used to always say, you can't catch them sitting on the dock. Water time, the more you are out, the more of those wide open bites you'll experience. And that's yeah. so yeah, true. That is. Every that once is. in a while, Dan says something really, really smart. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Dan. Don't get mad at me now. No, but you He's know, right, is, though, right? He's right. You know, you just, you just don't know. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going back to this because this is something that's always got to me is that in 1983 with El Nino, we had... Rick, Rick, big eye and yellowfin all through here, you know, in the channel. It was crazy, right? And the water was very warm, and uh, the kelp all died, and the biologist said the oceans are going to die, you know, because of the warm water. Yeah. You know, well, this is how smart, and this is why I don't give a lot of credence to um, young kids that are, you know, 18 to 20 something years old. Uh, from UC Santa Barbara as marine biologists because, you know, they're making these determinations without time on the water, not understanding a lot of that, right? And what had happened in that short span from hot El Nino in 83 to by May and June of 84, 
George and I were on the backside of Clemente, and with our 10 dBs, we're listening to the albacore stops going on, the butterfly and the mushroom. Out driving of nuts. Diego, and it's driving us nuts. Yeah. So we couldn't wait to get out there and go, you know. And so, um, you know, so the reality part compared to theory that you get from biologists and what they should and shouldn't do, throw it out the door. You know, it's whatever happens. You know, you, you know there's a guy that taught me, one of the guys that uh, was teaching me how to bass fish on the lakes. And we go, you know, where are they? And, you know, he would go, they are where you find them. And I'd go, oh, what a smart ass. Yeah, you like, know, thinking, come on, tell me where ass. they come are. Here. Yeah. But the more you fish, the more you find that to be true. Yeah. You know, so even though he meant to be sarcastic, it was very true when it came down to it. Yeah, 100%. So it's time on the water. You're not going to catch them in your living room. You have to expend the time out there on the water. You, know? abs you abs just don't know, you know. Jeff Yeoman from the 540 Slingers Club. Good evening, Phil and Danny. Thank you for your service, Jeff. Great to see you here, Emilio Escobar. Any updates on bluefin tunas on the Baja coast? We scoured it. Couldn't find anything, Emilio. Uh, hopefully, we'll find some more glacier shark. Whenever they say it was or could be a nice boat ride, there is no fish likely. Yes, true. You know, when you start talking about the weather or the camaraderie, yeah, he's yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. But, but you never know. It's all true. You just don't know. You don't know. Yeah. Yep. Emilio, I'm going out to search those blue fins with Captain Rene from Mara's. Wish me luck. We really want to find him. Hey, Emilio. So Captain Mara is down in Baja in Ensenada, and he has a great reputation. I haven't fished with him yet. Cool. I might be down there Tuesday, but oh, awesome. I was going to fish Yellowtail awesome, uh, at awesome. the bay, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to yeah. do that. Yeah, they look like nice fish. I've seen, I've seen a yeah, lot of right? nice pictures. Really nice. nice. And the big bonita mixed yep. in with yep. them, so... Uh, I'm not sure that I'm going to do that, but I'm thinking about that. Fisherman Matt Ryan says, uh, congrats on the grandkids, Phil. Thank you so much. Heard you're going to have Captain Dave this week. Uh, we were trying to work that out, but uh, I am uh, going to end up in a divorce if I don't honor this whole dinner thing I've got with my wife Friday. And it sounds like that was the night Dave could do it. So I'm going to honor my lovely wife, Rutita. Smart and, move. Yes. Smart uh, move. Dave and I will have to do that another time. Emilio Escobar will be trying the new speed trolling lure from Mag Bay Lures. The RM9 UV is tuna candy. We'll be watching oh, that no to see how that works. Emilio. So what's, that, what's that look like? You, you I don't know. Idea? Emilio, can you describe it a little bit to us? Yeah. I mean, uh, that's a hot deal. Sounds like it's I a mean, new we've, deal, we've man. Seen some, you know, we've seen some stuff all those years of running boats. I think we had one, one bluefin. It was like about a 12, maybe 15 pound fish, and I was full boring it to, you know, to Cortez Bank, and that was the only bluefin we ever got trolling, and it was small, like a 15 pounder or so, you know. So yeah, up until last year, on on our, you know, American Angler trip, you know, generally the night fishing was phenomenal, right? Right. Bit on, I felt sorry for the crew because those stinking fish bit day and night, right? Yes. And then we get on some fish, and typically I'm thinking, okay, I'll sleep during the day because there's smaller fish during the day. And here, a friend of ours, Cubby, one of our old regulars on the American Angler, Cubby's trolling one of these new Halcos. And, you know, with those, uh, oh, what do they call those ones? They, uh, the ones you have to troll real fast. Uh, the Mad Max. Mad Max. Yeah. Okay. We can't do that on a sport boat. We're going too slow. But this Halco, at I think it was about seven and a half. Is it seven and a half knots? Is what they measured it out at. We nailed the one seventy four on the American Angler. Right? Nice. So you know now now everybody wants to stay up and troll during the day. So now we're afforded these new lures that are capable of catching these big bluefin, which we never even thought was possible back in those days. So. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Oh, you know, it's a yeah. Big plus for us. You know, Definitely. You don't know. You Charles, don't know. Charles Link wants to know, Danny, should he start saving up rubber core sinkers again? <laughs> Remember, that's always the way you fish those albacore? You know, I, and I'm not a rubber core guy. I what, did I didn't you like, not like when I they slid like the, down? I didn't like that, and I didn't like the sharp edges on the on the on the top. Right, you know, where right. The goes in. What'd you fish with? I used to like, if I did, I, I split shot if I had to use stuff. Yeah. Or I would use a torpedo, chrome torpedo. Oh, that works good. And that, and you tie it. 
Yeah. You know, and that's, I had more, you know, it sinks down faster. Yep. It's got a little different profile, you know. I watched Pat Conklin do yep. that on the searcher, oh, man. And yeah, he fished, and absolutely. he fished like, what 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 ounce torpedo are you talking about? He was fishing a six ounce. Oh, yeah, but he used it, you know, the chromes are the best. Yeah. 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 And, you know, it's like anything. There you go on. There's something else we don't do typically on a lot of tuna trips and stuff that you do on albacores. You get them on a slide. Right. So a lot of these guys would even have dead baits, nose hooked, with about that much leader. And I guess nowadays you'd use fluorocarbon, you know, that much leader, and then your big sinker here, and you drop waves the minute you got hooked up on a jig. And typically, that's what would get bit, you know. You remember going in on the slide on. Oh God, yeah. And, you know, and, but so that's exciting, yeah, right? Sinker, yeah, it was fun. I, I miss that. I do too. I miss, of course, I fish. I like fishing light. I like fly lining them, but yeah, I do. And that's. I think we need a resurgence every now and then of, of the albacore to show their noses. Because I guarantee you, if the albacore bite, it will go nuts. You know, you won't find a, a parking lot available to put your car in to go fish because it'll be jugged. Oh, it's going to be something else. All right, Charles. Yeah, save up on those rubber cores, man. They're coming. The albacore are almost there. And Mackie is walking in. Danny, he made it. I'll tell you, all I was right. just cussing him out, saying, where is that lazy <laughs> boat? He's got all kinds hey, of stuff. Hey, how you doing? Cue ball says, it's about rail time. Yeah, it is, right? You got to fish to catch yep. something. Yep. Alex Alcaraz, who is a constant supporter of the Freeman Adventure Show, he says, we're waiting for the yellows. Where are they? There weren't any way down the Baja Coast, I can tell you that. Yeah, and they were supposed to have been a, that crazy? a, a bunch of them you yeah. know, coming up the line. The so water was I, so I, cold. Weird. I think they're all sucked into Ensenada Bay Who right knows? now. Yeah, yeah, warm warming water. up, yeah. Yeah, hang on. Hopefully there's more. I think we got more to up. come. Uh, let's see. Emilio Escobar, I can send you a pic on Instagram. Is that all right? Hey. Absolutely, but my, I'm terrible with looking at my Instagram. Send it to me on my phone, <laughs> Amelia. I'm going to give you a phone number here in about two seconds. So grab a paper and pencil, send it right to me in my messages. That works even better. Glacier Shark, the fish have tails, and they know how to use them. Oh, absolutely. Well, they, they're searching the bait, you know, and they're going to go for their, their primo baits, you know. So they're going to be searching, and, you know, they're going to be looking for a lot of chovies, you know, so... Uh, that's one of their favorites. All right, very good. Uh, and then Emilio, oh, Emilio, 657-227-6459. Uh, uh, Mackie and I might be down there here uh, also, like Tuesday, Wednesday, or we got to figure that out. We're going to talk about that later on, but maybe we'll uh, be able to grab a burger or something together. That would be fantastic. All right, 540 Slinger, Jeff Yeoman says... Taddy Y2, excuse me, or Mega Baits for the albacore on the slide. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I used the 9 Chrome, too. That was, that was a good one. It's a little smaller profile. Yeah. You know, Choby type size. It's about that big, you know. Three and a half, yeah. But it, a heavy Chrome, you know. And I use a blue and Chrome. Yeah, but those always were killers. Yeah. yeah. Um, Emilio, yeah, you can send it to me on Messenger. I do check Messenger all the time. I'm trying to keep up with, you know. Yes, yeah, so there's so many ways to contact a person now, you know, Danny? <laughs> yeah. you, you know, you got your phone, then you got your email, True. then you got your Instagram, yeah. and then TikTok, and, uh, <laughs> you know, whatever. But, no, hey, I deeply appreciate that, Emilio. Send, send it to me on Messenger or on my phone, either way. And Alex is pleading with you, don't send dirty pictures of your feet. Now, I don't know if that means, like, he's doing some lascivious thing with his feet, or he's got dirty feet. I'm I not sure. It's one I'm of those two. Gonna, I'm not even going to think about that one. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to let skip, that one go. Let's skip over that one. <laughs> uh, Danny Pan, Phil, I think I bought some albacore from you back then. Ha ha. Danny, seriously? Did you really? That cracks me up. When my brother and I would put them on the front lawn, <laughs> and I, I don't know if Danny's being serious or not, but um, that is hilarious. <laughs> I mean, we literally had people pull their like, car wrecks because... People recognize it was such a great fish. Oh, yeah. It's so yeah. good to eat, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. You know, my, my grandma, both grandmas, lived in a place down in little Tokyo called Tokyo Towers. It was a brand new high rise back then. And it had, you know, nothing but old, retired, and, and most of them were pretty old people. And I remember taking a whole three quarter ton truckload of Albies 
over there, and they just went nuts. They said, "Have at it, have at it." Yeah, you know. All right. Well, yeah. as long as we're admitting to our uh, uh, possible jail time, although I think I still have a photo. Statute of limitation. Yeah, I still have a photo album. Yeah. With a receipt from Captain Kidd's Fish Market, my brother <laughs> and I. It was either a two or a three day trip, and we had 1,800 pounds of Albuquerque we sold to Captain Kidd's <laughs> Fish Market. I still have the receipt because, once again, I didn't know, I, I had no idea. Yeah, I go, like, yeah, what, yeah. what's, well, that was, you know, that's pretty prevalent. It was like for us, though, it was just, we just wanted to get rid of them. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. I and get it. Give them away and donate them, you know. The I, like I totally get yeah. it. Yeah, but somebody's going to pop on here and say, that's the reason why there's no fish left. <laughs> Dirk's like you and your brother, you <laughs> dumb. I'll yeah, blame Scott. Repopulated. I'm blaming Scott Buecher for that. <laughs> David Rosenthal, I still have a pack of Channel Island Chovy fish traps that I used to use on the slide for albacore. They work dandy too. They have the silver and blue and black back, or yeah, or something like that. Wasn't it? That silver, black back, silver and blue. Yeah. All right, so the slide, what is the slide? There's somebody out there oh, the listening and they're going, okay, what the hell is like, the slide? Okay, we're going to have to get used to that. You know, you're going to be using trolling feathers. Yeah. But, there, you know, there's so many new lures now that you could implement that probably haven't been used in an albacore application. I know. Because you know, we're old school. We're used to using the old Patcos and Zookers and you name it, you know, the, the old Jap heads, you know. Pardon my French. You can say I mean, that. That's what get we away with it. I can say that. You yeah. Know. But that's what we call them, you know. And that was just the chrome head with the feathers. And they, they work dandy. But, you know, it got to the point where, like, um, with the plastics on the slide, the fish traps and stuff, you know, the plastics work a killer. So tell everybody, there's somebody out there doesn't know what that means. So the what slide. it means, okay, a lot of, you know, typically you're trolling for albacore. And we're trolling probably six knots, five knots. You're trolling, you slow down a little bit. You yell hook up, well, the uh, kid on the tank hits him with a scoop on the downwood, downwind corner, you know, and the fish start boiling around, and everybody just goes bendo, you know. They, and if you're in quick on a slide, you know, if, you're, if, the, if it's dragging, a lot of kids will nose hook it and put a chrome sinker on try to get it down. You're going to have different things. You know, I, I always like the fly line to me, and I always lower collar hook it. And, and get them with a fly line. Yeah. But there's so many different ways. And it's it's fun in a sense that you can get them on everything with the plastics, with the iron, with the baits, you name it, you know. Whether it was like back in the old days, a lot of uh, use a chrome three ounce or something like that and then put on a, a liter. And that was before fluorocarbon. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, you'd it'd be enhanced now. And then the number two hook or so, nose hook it, you know. Uh, so there's there's so many different ways to implement you know the you know the the method of catching albacore on the slide and and in the stop. Of course, when the boat stops, you're better off fly lining. If the you know lower collar hook was always my favorite, you know. But um, when they go albacore go crazy, it's fun for everybody. Oh heck yeah! Everybody can catch them. Exactly. And that's the best part. And they are so good and to eat, man. And they're great eating, yeah. Oh, they're yeah, the and best. And it's been a long time since I've had one. So, yeah. Man, they I'm are. I'm kind of missing it. So, yeah. um, Emilio sent, he just sent it to Messenger. Thank you, Emilio. I hope it's not your dirty feet, though. Um, and then he said, I missed the last two numbers. It's 657 227 6459. The same number where you can book a Freeman Adventures fishing trip. We have three in May, two on the El Patron on. May the 9th and the 23rd, and then a third trip on the Island Spirit out of Ventura on the 31st. If you'd like to join us, you can certainly do that. This really strange guy, Mackie, wants to know, how do you rig for albacore? You know, when you go into an albacore stop, folks, you got to have, you know, you, you don't need as much tackle for albacore fishing, but you want a 20-pound fly line, you know, rig with a number four hook. And there's there's little things. You want a little edge? I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you right now. Typically we used to use like 9174 mustads, right? And a number four, a number two hook. And and you I use a lower collar hooking. A lot of guys will nose hook them. Um, some guys will put split shots on. Uh, on the slide, a lot of guys will put a chrome sinker, anywhere from a two to three ounce chrome sinker, tie on a leader, and then I guess nowadays you use fluorocarbon. 
So if you're fly lining now, you'd splice your fluorocarbon. You know, some people put split shots. You know, any number of ways to do it. You know, I like fly lining. You can always add the weight, like with the split shot or so. Yeah. You know, but then if you if you need one to sink out quick, you you probably have to use a, a two three ounce chrome, and I use chrome. You know, and then dropper loop. Uh, no, I would use a. Uh, just tied to the top, and then tied to the, the top, yeah. yeah, and and use about the, you know two and a half three feet of uh, fluorocarbon now. No hook to bait. No hook to bait, and then <laughs> for albacore, I'm going to give you a, a, a trick. I use you know typically you use number number four mustads and stuff like that, but now there's some designer hooks that are phenomenal. Yeah, I got I, I got to tell you. Um, Steve, you told me, and, and a bunch of us did a study a while back, and we actually weighed the hooks, okay? And um, I was working with Gamakatsu at the time, too, Gamakatsu and Spro. Yeah. And you take a number four Mustad, and it weighed 450 milligrams. It's light, folks. You know that. You know, so most of the guys are nose hook or lower collar, right? I would take a number four Gamakatsu. It's a much lighter wire. And it's got a ring. With the ring, and, well, that was the one I straightened out on those bluefin. Uh, yeah. At, uh, Freedom trip. We went. Freedom trip. Yeah. But boy, I got bit. I mean, and when I'm in, even now, of course, stops with that hook. Now, the ring and that hook, 350 milligrams. Of course, you and I can't really feel that weight, but that ancho we can. I'll tell you what, I get bit with that hook. You know, if you're fly lining, it's touchy fly line bite, you will smoke them. Fluorocarbon. That particular hook, because you got the the freedom of the ring, having the ring hooked, and the light weight. You know, it's 100 milligrams. We can't feel that, but that little chovy can. You yeah. Know, and I use a lower collar, and and usually it's every cast. And it's so always it's, it's all, all these about things. Yeah. presenting a bait that looks natural. Absolutely. And that's what Absolutely. helps to do that, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right, uh, Fisher, fishing Matt Ryan. I'll never forget being on the Redondo special with you giving Scott. A hard time. Me? I never give Scott a hard time, man. You should have. I raked him over the coals for you, Matt, on board the uh, the Independence. Uh, Granite <laughs> Grouper. You're going to have to refresh my memory on that one. It sounds funny, though. Pokey Dad Fishes, Phil and Danny. How do you like to cook your albacore? You want to go first or me? Well, you know, I saw so much of it back in the 80s. I got tired of eating it raw. Okay. But, you know, albacore is the, you know, chicken of the sea, right? It's the white meat tuna. So if you cook it, it turns pure white. It's just, you know, there's nothing you could do wrong with that. But we, we played around with different recipes and did stuff where we roll it in futakaki. You know, you, you loin it to where it's like sashimi style. Put futakaki on it so it gives it added flavor and color. And then you sear it just a hair on each side so it stays raw in the middle. And that's a killer. And it's just developing whether you're using a wasabi sauce or a ponzu sauce with it. But it's a killer. You won't be able to keep people off that. It's un unreal. It just melts in your mouth. You oh, know? perfect. All right. Sounds good. Um, Charles, Le oh, shoot. My favorite is, you know what I do? I, I, and I love doing this. Take your albacore, cut the red meat out of there so yeah. you just have the oh, pure. Yeah. Wrap it in bacon. Barbecue it. I'm getting hungry thinking about this. And then the sauce that we would pour over it half butter, half olive oil, copious amounts of garlic, just tons, and some oregano, and uh, salt and pepper on the fish. And you pour that over that with that bacon and that albacore. And I'm, I'm leaving, Danny. I'm, I'm out of here. I'm going to go get something to eat, man. It is so good. We would cook it for people that hated fish, and they'd go, what is this? Like chicken or what is it? Oh, yeah. They had no idea. That's yeah, so you get away with albacore and, like and that. That's really funny. That's in the days where your albacore sat in a gunny sack for eight hours. That's right. What it's is not, it going to be like in good. RSW? Oh, quality Can you stuff. imagine? Quality, quality stuff nowadays, folks. You know, that, that game has really come up considerably from the time we were running boats. You know, where they sat down in a gunny sack and you watered them down, you know, and cooled them off. And then, you know, later on maybe put them down in the fish hole on a one-day run. A lot of times they sat out there back in the old days. Right. You know, so it was totally different, totally different. But uh, 
Yeah, it, it, there's no end to the different recipes. But I, I have a funny one for you. Yeah. Okay, I can remember um, catching skipjack. And the uh, guys come up in the wells. And I remember Taka doing this to one of the passengers. He says, well, we just plank them. And the guy goes, plank them? Well, he says, yeah, you take the skipjack, you fillet it all out. You, you take the, the fillet, you put it out there, you put onions, garlic, you put all this stuff on it. He says, and you, you bake it for so long. He says, you throw the fish out and they eat the plank. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but then, he was, you know, Taco was always keeping the people. Right, you know, right. And stitches with his, he was, had a real dry sense of humor, but yeah. he was great, you know. Yeah, Nick yeah. Curcione had one. still is, yeah. Nick had one where he said you pack the fish in mud and then you cook it and throw the fish away and eat the mud. <laughs> you know, so I say, yeah, same thing pretty much. All right, Charles Link says, okay, I'm dusting off the D8 and plastic reels. Albacore, here I come. We're talking this albacore up here yep, yep, yep. tonight. The galley chef extraordinaire, Jason Lawler from the Amigo, says, hello, guys. Jason was here on our last show together, uh, and he's always adds a great touch to the That's show. Awesome. Missing yep. you tonight, Jason. Hope you're doing good. Cue ball says, seared albacore. I can't argue with that. It is absolutely Fantastic. Yep. Rob S., you guys have any suggestions for La Nina, or is there a difference between El Nino and El Nina? It should be La Nina. Yeah, uh, regarding water temperatures and species in the area. Is there any difference species during a La Nina? You bet there is, Rob cold, S. Cold Andy? water. Cold water. Yeah. El Nino's warmer water. You're going to yeah. get yellowfin, dorado, you know, that skipjack. Stuff like that. That's the warm water, yeah, El warm Nino. Warm water, El Nino. And yeah. then La, La Nina? Yeah, you're going to see albacore, maybe bluefin, you know. But it's colder water. So yeah, you're, you're going to see that. that. You're going to see kelp grow better in the cold water. Oh, yeah. You're yeah. going to see some yeah. decent calico bass fishing. You know, once it gets up over 60 degrees, yeah. Yeah. starts getting towards 65, it'll really bite well. Uh, you're going to see good white sea bass fishing, good halibut fishing in La Nina, cold yep. water, right? Yep. And uh, so, yeah, there is a huge difference, Rob. Uh, those different species are going to show up depending upon water temperature, and the El Nino and La Nina will dictate that every time. Uh, Fisherman Matt Ryan says, Scott had hooked the bottom, and you kept telling him he caught a granite grouper. Yes, I love doing that with Scott. <laughs> Emilio Escobar just sent it. Phil, check out your phone. Emilio, I would do that if my phone was not filming the show right now, so... I'm going to have to look at your dirty feet <laughs> at the end of Danny's show tonight. Um, Sniper Gene, Danny, what's your favorite fly line setup? You know, it's not for everybody. You, you have to bend around a little bit, but I fish a straight graphite. And I don't recommend it for guys that, uh, that pull differently. I mean, I, I don't ever get my rod higher than 90 degrees. But, you know, the, the graphite recoil so much faster. One of my favorite ones back in those days when I was repping G. Loomis, we had a 20-pound stick with rollers, lightweight rollers, and it, you know, the AFCO rollers. And that, and I had, uh, oh, I was using the Trinidad, uh, what was the little one? At, um, okay, what was the little one? What was the number on that? The 20 was a, it was a small one, a square yeah. size. Right? Yeah. But that thing, uh, it was a killer back then, you know, absolute killer because the it fly lined well, and you, we put them on so quick. And I have a friend, um, Pat Riley, that actually turned me on to that. He did it. Well, he coached the Lakers, right? <laughs> Different Pat Riley. <laughs> <laughs> but this Pat Riley is one of the best fishermen I've ever seen in my life. He's now, he's uh, turned into a trout fisherman, you know. Uh, it doesn't matter what he fishes. He's going to be the best fisherman I've ever seen, you know. And I'm sure he's just having a ball up there, but he takes his wife up to the uh, that little Indian casino in Bishop, and he goes out trout fishing these days. But he was one of the best saltwater guys I've ever seen fish, you know. And but Pat, you know, was the one that got me into using the the roller roller bearing AFCOs with that 20-pound Luma Scraphite yeah. and, and that little Trinidad, you know. And uh, just amazing how much damage we did. And I would do it, and we... I can't even tell you how many albacore we got that one time. It was, it, was, it was dumb. But, you know, that was when there was no limit, you know. And we were a little dumber. You know, you, at the end of the day, you go, what are we going to do with all these things? You know, hey, anybody want albacore? You know. But um, deadly outfit. But you have to know how to fish. You have to be able to keep 
the angle of the rod down where you're taking all the pulling. I've seen people, I gotta, I gotta tell you, for me being in the rod, fishing rod industry and, and running boats and everything else, I see horrendous things when I see people high stick. Yeah, you can high stick, but you're getting one tenth of pressure up here than you are if you're have, keeping it down down low at that end, that lower angle here. You know, you get it up here, you got one tenth of pressure, and you got a much higher incidence and chance of breaking that rod. So why would you do that? You know, and I see that all the time with guys that supposedly know how to fish. You know, but when you're doing the testing on the things, when you work for rod companies that you deal with straight graphite and high performance stuff. It's about the performance, you know. Yeah, we can make a, a fighter jet out of stainless steel. That's tough. Is it going to have the speed? No, because it's too heavy. Yeah. You know, does it have the agility? No. It's too heavy to have that, too. You know, you get all those attributes out of graphite. There's a reason why we're using a lot of these composites. And, you know, um, I never broke one, but I'm fishing differently, you know. And so it's going to have to deal with people maybe perhaps changing their style of fishing and really understanding that you're, you're getting so much more pressure keeping it at this angle than you do up here. And Phil, you have it on film. Oh, yeah. You go back to that freedom trip. Everything I had was on the rail here down. Yeah, absolutely. And you're not going to, you're not going to do that size fish with, it, with that lighter line without that. You yes. Know? And that was a straight graphite rod, too. That was one of the 30-pound rods I designed with uh, you know, you just have to be very cognizant of the angles that you're pulling. You'll never break it, and you pull more power. That's a win-win deal, guys. Absolutely. Jason Lawler is lamenting the fact that he did not come to the show tonight. He's <laughs> pining away for a moment to be on with you again. Jason, you'll have to do it next week. I saw Mark Paisano Jr. down here. We chatted for quite some time, and uh, we chatted about you quite a bit. Actually, your name never came up, but I just thought it'd make you nervous. <laughs> Cue ball. Funny, I just got ex through, got done, explaining to my wife that we have RSW now. Brilliant minds think alike. So he was there on the same page as us. Yeah, it's going to be such oh, a different world. Absolutely. When you eat that albacore, it's going to be oh, really, my God. really good. Yeah, it's going to be unreal. All right, Emilio, I got you, man. You better believe it. Danny, any experience with the Mag Track Wahoo Lure? From Mag Bay, I'm planning on using it for bluefin tuna. No, I have no experience. I haven't even seen it. I haven't. I, have you seen? No, seen one? no, oh, I haven't either. Yeah, it's up to you, Amelia. You got to make that happen, yeah, man. Yeah, there you go. Daniel Leano, say, hey, Daniel, it's great to have you with us. He says hello. It's always good to see you, my friend. Emilio says, yeah, too much pressure on the rod, no good, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, at the right angles. That's right. And then you have your drag. I fish a pretty snug drag, but you can do that if you have the right angle because you won't you won't ever break it at that angle. Amelia's and saying you got to work with your reel, you know, like you know. Yeah, exactly well, you, what he's talking about. You have to, yeah, you have to complement the reel and your rod have to complement each yeah. other, you know. And you get away with more things with the composite, but performance-wise, you can't beat straight graphite. You just have to be able to utilize it correctly. You got to. Yes. Be cognizant of not high sticking and things like that. You have to pull a certain way. What kind, that's just habit. Yeah. We're kind of talking like, do you realize how you're talking tonight? You're, you and I are talking like, we're definitely going to catch Albuquerque this year. <laughs> I, mean, I think we got everybody buying in on this. It's coming back. It's coming back in the memory. <laughs> but, I, you know, blessed to fish that straight graphite stuff with the la you know, those last Albuquerque seasons we had. And it was dangerous where, you know, we ended up catching more than we needed to have. Yeah. That's for sure. And, and and I think I think we told you Pete the Murs. Yeah. We all learned that lesson. We came home. We were, oh that right. That was really smart. Now what are we going to do with all this stuff? You know, give it away. And then you end up spending more time. You you get home after a trip and you want to relax. No. Oh, there's you no end relaxing. Up cleaning fish. You know, and your relatives say, "Well, is it filleted? Uh, no. Oh. You know. So yeah, it's different. I'm, I'm rethinking all that now. I know. Well, you want a fish? Here it is. Uh, yeah, exactly. You can eat the fins, the tail, whatever you want. Eyeballs here. It's yours. Yeah, the, the funny thing was before our trip on the Independence, I was thinking these poor people on this trip, their processing bills are going to be so big. And so, you know, and then, you know, we're, obviously we didn't find oh, the Oh, yeah, that fins, is so. the concern these days. <laughs> That's yeah. the way it goes, man. Yep. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, next week for sure, says Jason Lawler. 
he will be here, so maybe we should cancel the show. Just kidding. <laughs> Fishing Matt Ryan, does everyone only focus on the bluefin tuna now? Any local fish, white sea bass, yellowtail, etc.? He's right. You know, there's all kinds of other stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the water's pretty cold right now, so it's pretty much rockfish do or die. Halibut yeah, are around. Yeah, there's been a... You know, sea the, bass too. Yeah, yeah. The, the pride had some sea yeah, bass. So, yeah, 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 we're right there, Matt. I think we're getting closer all the time. Yep. Um, that is for sure. Emilio says, Yeah, dreams of bluefin tuna. We're hoping that they show back up again. Danny, do you have any experience with vertical jigging? Thoughts on rods and reels used with that? Just implementing the same rods that I have. Um, and yeah, just dropping it down and, you know, Wine, like a yo-yo type deal. Yeah. Um, I don't do a lot of that. You know, where the guys, they do the, the pumping. I, I played with it, but I'm so used to just doing a, you know, a yo-yo type grind where you just bounce it down and grind, you know, and I'm, I'm used to fishing like the tails at the Alejos, you know, you get those big tails on the yo-yo there, and it's just, you know, get it down to the bottom and just Grind like heck. And, and your bit. And your bit. Yeah. You know, and yeah. And you better have them on 50 at least. Uh, uh, we Last time down there, I fished 130. With, and wow. We fished the scads. Yeah. The scads. And, oh, and, okay. And you could still get rocked. It's what amazing. size hook were you using on those things? Uh, I think I was fishing a 10 aught. Yeah. 10 aught, 12 aught. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, but we're using all scad macro. We made bait and made a tank of scad. And it was every bait. In fact, I, that was one of the first times I never kept a limit of yellowtail because I'm looking at the average size. I'm going, oh, my God. What was it, like 40? Uh, yeah. The average? Yeah. Really? Yeah. average 40. I had some, several of them in the upper 40s. Damn. You know. Those are you know, nice fish. Just, yeah. And, and I got rocked on one, so who knows? You know, who knows? You know, so there's some biggies. Oh, yeah. Heck, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Emilio, he can only think about bluefin tuna. He's a one man. He just, that's all he can think about right yeah. now. Yeah, that's all right. That's okay. That's okay, Emilio. They'll be back. Jason Lawler said, good sign of yellowtail on the last trip on the Amigo. That's right. The Amigo had six yellows on their last trip. Fishing uh, one of the islands out here. I know which island, but I don't want to, you know, how that goes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, so... Uh, yeah, there was six yellows there. I believe the Fury out of Dana Wharf Sport Fishing had some yellows out that way. So I think they're starting to sneak in here. You know, we've seen that pretty steady flow. We have that good yellowtail fishing going on in Ensenada right now. We've referenced a couple times tonight. We just need a little bit of warm gonna, water. I think we're going to see good fishing. You know, it's, Phil, it's April. It's April. It's early, you know. And we've been spoiled. We have been spoiled because we have been seeing year-round fishing. You know, and I mean... You know, that not many years growing up did we ever see stuff. I mean, uh, the Albacore season kickoff was always July, July 4th, generally, you know, right? Before that, the yellowtail at the Coronados. You know, so there's always these things that were imprinted in our heads as, you know, for us running boats back in those days. We didn't even take the boat down to San Diego till July when, you know, hopefully the tails would come. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, the tuna would come. Yeah, through, yeah. The Albacore, you know. So, you know, it's just, uh, we'll take what... It, we adapt to whatever's there, but you know, in the old days, that was the train of thought. It's not like now, you know. You just, you know, we got spoiled. Oh, totally. We got spoiled with bluefin year round and things like that. You know, on a selfish level, on the independence, you know, when people are catching game fish, I'm filming. Yeah. So if guys hooked up to a yellowtail or a bluefin, I'm I'm there. Right. Right. I don't want to miss the moment when this guy catches his first hundred pounder. Yeah. Because that's what I'm there for. Sure. 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 Um. So when we started fishing rockfish, which is my favorite, the last thing I need is footage of some guy going like, you know, turning the handle of a reel for 20 minutes. You know, a nice shot of the guy with his lingcod when he catches it, great. Or his big vermilion. I had a freaking ball. I was just fishing a heavy iron with my son up in the bow, and the two of us were hooting and hollering, and I'd bounce that thing a couple times and then just feel the rod load. Another ling, another big vermilion. That was so much fun. All right. So my last day on the angler last year, we came came inside and we did probably the best rock fishing I've ever seen in my life. You know, all these rats, like just beautiful. And, you know, two hook canyons, and we'd all drop and boom, 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 and you know, guys getting, you know, my my partner Jeff. You know, you met Jeff in the show. Jeff's been on the show. 
two beautiful reds like that, you know, load it up. I've, guy on this side, two reds. I, I bring up two samurai whooper. I'm going, I'm, <laughs> did, did I wash my hands? Did I, not, <laughs> after, I said, and then I move over. It got so funny that I, I went on the other side of Jeff in between two other guys, reds on one side, reds on the other, and I got the grouper again. So I, I definitely had the stink, but it got to the point where it was so funny. I mean, it was just, I was a laughing, I, and it was perfect, you know. Here I'm a charter master, and, and I'm the laughing stock, and I couldn't stop laughing myself. I says, I can't believe this. I'd move around, i go down the boat, everybody, solid reds. I get a slimy, I go, this is unbelievable. That is crazy. Yeah. But it's, it made for good fun because I was definitely the butt end of the joke, yeah. I just asked Mackie what time it is because we're supposed to get wrapping up here at 6 o'clock. Yeah. And I figure he's going to show me and it's going to be 5.15 or so. It's 6 o'clock. What? This is going way too fast. We're not going to wrap it up quite yet. <laughs> okay. We'll wait for Tony to Tony's show up with give a machete. Us a yeah, yeah. And see what, show how it goes from we'll there. we the, see the bullet. All right, Q-Ball says... Um, uh, it's about time, Jason, if we can string some good weather days together, we should, and, and he's right. Cue ball is absolutely right. We need some solar warming. Uh, we need a lack of wind. And unfortunately, we're going to get a windy Saturday. And a fair coverage like, of boats. And some rain. Yeah. Few coverage. Yeah, yeah. We'll get a little bit of rain, but yeah. few coverage of the boats. Yeah. It's the wind mostly, right? The it's rain's the no big deal. No, the rain, the water, to my knowledge, doesn't hurt fish too much. Yeah. Right. I think they kind of like it. Yeah, they're kind yeah. of already yeah. wet, yeah. as the yeah. old joke yeah. goes, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, uh, Fisherman Matt says, why is Phil invisible today? Um, my wife punched me, and I have a black eye, and I'm embarrassed about it. <laughs> and no. Hey, I'm always invisible. This is the Danny Cadota show. I'm out here <laughs> to read comments and just uh, kind of pal around with Danny, but I'm always invisible on this show. Like Alfred Hitchcock used to be. Or no, actually, he'd make a cameo <laughs> run through yeah, one of his yeah, things. Yeah. So, All right, yeah. Blue Skies. Hey, good to see you. Hello, Danny. I have uh, Yo's Rod from back in the day. 20, uh, 3 pound and a... 20, what is it now? 20, 3 pound and a Seeker, 20 to 30 pound. Must be for, 20, 30. Yeah, 20 to 30. Uh, for sure, you can pull on Yo's Rod, but it's pretty obvious you can't pull on it the same way you can on a seeker rod. Well, you know, back in those days, you're using fiberglass too. So it's uh, the technology has changed considerably from right now, you know. And, you know, like with Yo, Yo was, uh, you know, if it was coming from Yo's, chances pretty, were pretty good it was coming from Leon, you know, because it was just down the street, you know. Cal Star, save, you know, he was just down the street from Yo, and he was probably the, the number one guy. But yeah, and Yo used to charter the Mustang, so we had the blessing of having him and his his gang on the boat, and some, you know, great fishermen on that boat, as as which all the tackle shops had. They had their highliner groups, you know, or, you know, uh, later on we had Taka's groups, and we had Eastside Rod and Rue, which was Mickey's tackle shop, but, you know, you had the Redondo guys, you know, Pete's guys, and you name it. We all had our hot tackle shops. Yeah, arts, oh yeah. Arts right there in Gardena too, yep. you know. That was another one. A lot of those great, yeah, a lot of the great fishermen came out of there and they, you know, so. Scott Buchard is joining us. Everybody's been talking about you tonight, Scott. And some of it was good. Uh, Scott wants to know, any albacore going on? Uh, not yet, but we're convinced here at the Freeman Adventures YouTube 20 Seconds Free Landing Studio on the Danny Cadota Show that it's only a matter of time. Yeah. Scott, I got a uh, albacore jig I'll give you, you know, so next time you're out, just troll it, just hold it back in the stern till you get bit. Might take a couple days, but, you know. Might take a couple try. months maybe, for that matter. Uh, maybe, yeah. We'll hope it's the right year, too. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll work, Scott. Jason Lawler says, Scotty approved. Whenever uh, his idea, Jason Lawler, is that we take Scott's little photo with a thumbs up, and then when we have a business or a lure or something that's really good, you put Scotty approved on. I kind of like that idea, to be honest <laughs> with you. Dan Smith says, Phil, Danny, when someone named Tony or Guido tells you to leave, you leave, okay? Yeah. I think he's right. I think yeah. He, I think he's making a yeah. Italian mafia yeah. joke there. Sure. You yeah. might get in trouble here, sure, Dan, sure, sure. doing those ethnic kind of jokes nowadays. <laughs> Daniel Lightfoot, zero to zero. I got one hit. Michael Limo with a checkup. 
Did you oh. make a bet on his game, Danny? No. You didn't make a bet? No. All right, so it's 0-0 zero, zero and... I didn't hear any odds. He's freaking playing baseball, Little League, and watching our show. That is funny. You got to admit, right? You no, know, he's hardcore. I love, I love you, I Michael. Love My kind of kid. You're Every number day. one. Yep. Well, I mean, we got a break here, and it is past six, and Tony's wow. going to be here at any moment. Okay, I can't believe we'll give how fast. A break, yeah. Can you believe how fast this went? No, it went fast. It, went it fast, did, guys. But and thanks for checking in, everybody, and keeping us posted. And we'll keep you posted. But you know, like we said, you know, it's uh, Mother Nature is going to really determine what goes on here. You know, but I, I think there's uh, some good stuff in the in the future, and we'll let the weather have a little chance to settle down. I think we'll. You know, with a little bit of boat coverage, I think we're going to find something here. So, All right. Dan Smith says he's half Sicilian, so he can get away with saying that about Guido and Tony. <laughs> kind of like you uh, talking about the jab heads, Danny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, and uh, Tangle Diver says, see ya. And Daniel Leano says, good to hear you all driving. All right. Very good. We are so happy to bring you to show while you are driving. Hopefully you're not in too much crazy traffic. Hit that like button. I'll be back with the morning briefing tomorrow morning, bright and early. We'll have lots more content. Who knows? We may head to Mexico and catch some yellowtail this weekend. And for Danny Cadota, Danny, thanks again for another great show, my friend. Thanks for tuning in, folks. We'll see you next week. All right. All you right. all take care, we'll and we'll see you again really, really soon.